for your goodness. We thank you because of the way you are speaking to us in this retreat. Thank you for gathering us together for the power for the present hour. And we're praying, O oh Lord, the power to face the future. And the power to understand when we come to a crossroad. The power to be able to make the right choice in our lives. And the power to walk in the path that leads to victory. Grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. You must have had something in mind when you called us by the gospel and you brought us into the kingdom at such a time like this. We're praying, Lord, that your purpose of bringing us into the kingdom at such a time like this for our personal benefit and for the benefit of our families and for the salvation of our community and the world to repay. Nothing will hinder your purpose for our lives in Jesus' name. We're asking, O Lord, that where we have been walking around without taking heed to ourselves and to our ways, and then our path has become confused, Lord, we pray you straighten out everything in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Once again, Lord, we're pleading that as we read your word, impress the right thing upon every heart, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to remain in your very presence and in your power. And everything you want to accomplish in us and for us and through us, be it, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We give the glory to you as we know you are going to edify everyone in your church. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down. We come to consider something in the word of God that many people do not generally look at. You need to remember that the church, I mean the large church, the church all over the world, they're divided into two major sections. There is the part of the church that think that whatever will be, will be. God has predestined everything and God has ordained everything. And you cannot avoid, you cannot have, uh, kind of prevent anything happening. That whatever happens in life to you, to your family, or to the church, or to the community, or to the nation. It is something unchangeable, unavoidable, cannot be prevented. That's one part of the church. Another part of the church believes that there are things avoidable. There are things preventable. We don't have to go through all the calamities of the world. We don't have to suffer unnecessarily. There are things that are before us or things around us that we do not need to allow to destroy our present lives or our future lives. The first part of the church, believing that whatever will be, will be. They do not look at the responsibility of man. They do not look at what the Lord has told us that this is the way, O Kidian, that I put life and death before you. And therefore choose life that you may live, you and your sons. They do not know that we have the power and the freedom, the volition of choice. Therefore they just say, God has ordained everything. He has predestined everything. And in the understanding of predestination, anything that happens, those things were meant to happen. But we're coming to this message today and we're looking at divine antidote for preventable tragedy. You find a lot of words there. One tragedy. That means something negative, terrible, might be death, 
destruction, perdition, punishment, calamity, suffering, sickness, attack, affliction, whatever, tragedy. There's another word there, preventable. That means that those tragedies don't have to take place. And those difficulties, they don't have to come. And the things people plunge themselves into, they don't have to happen. They are preventable. They are avoidable. And then he tells us there is an antidote. If there's a tragedy, we should have prevented. And we did not prevent a tragedy. If there is a danger, a difficulty, devastation, destruction that people have gotten themselves into, they should have avoided it, but they did not. There is still an antidote, a solution, a way out. Then the word is divine. That means the divine provision, what God himself has said. That if you look at your life from the beginning to this time, and you've seen tragedy, which you could have prevented, avoided, but you did not prevent, there is an antidote that God himself, that heaven is providing for us. And when you take that antidote, you will prevent the unnecessary dangers that we have in our lives. Let me just clear it up for you. Because of the many people that do not understand, there is preventable tragedy. And they say what will be, will be. Take the case of Aaron and a golden cow. Moses went to the top of the mountain to receive the law from the hand of the Lord. And then he handed over to his assistant, his name Aaron. Keep the people, stay with the people. The Lord is taking them to the land of Canaan. And I'm going to get the law from the hand of the Lord that will direct the people and move them along in the right way. While he was gone, the people came to Aaron and he said, Up, oh, make us gods. Make us idols that will go before us. Don't tell me that God predestined them to make idols. He commanded them not to make idols. Don't tell me that whatever will be, will be. They couldn't avoid, of course, they could avoid it. But he didn't avoid it. And God said, Moses, go down to your people. I reject them. They know more my people. I'm going to make you a great nation. I will destroy them. That destruction was preventable. Just don't make the idol. we we'll find the case of Nadab and Abihu. The two sons of Aaron. And God said, Aaron, you know what? I'm going to make your sons the priests, and you will be the high priest. I'm giving you this special privilege. You will offer sacrifices unto me for the sake of the children of Israel. And this is the kind of incense and fire sacrifice and adoration that oblation that will give to the Lord and Nadab and Abihu they made strange fire and it came to the presence of God fire came from heaven burnt them up that tragedy of the fire coming burning them up it was preventable they caused it for themselves and Ananias and Sapphira in the early church, people were coming, they were selling what they had, and they were offering to the Lord. And it was voluntary. There wasn't anything compelling everybody that you must sell everything you have, even if you sold, if you bring half, tell us it is half. If you bring one quarter, tell us this is one quarter. If you are bringing a tenth, a tithe, tell us it is a tenth. But then Ananias came and he gave each, and the apostles said, Is this all? Who said, This is all? How is it that you have lied unto the Holy Ghost? Whilst it remained, it was yours. 
it was in your hand, and you could do as you pleased with it. And he fell down dead. That's a tragedy that was avoidable, preventable. And then three hours later, the wife came. And Peter said, tell me, what your husband brought, was that all? That's all. How is he to agree together? And she died right there. A couple dying prematurely and going to hell. Preventable. It shouldn't have happened. And because it was in their hand. You're thinking about the ten spies. Out of the twelve. Go search the land. Bring us back word and tell us how the land is. Don't make any conclusion. Don't tell us we can or we cannot. That's not in your hand. That is the hand of leadership. But you go see the land, the walls, the people who are there. Bring us back word. If you can, bring some food so we'll know the land is fruitful. And he came back. And he said, we went to the land, and we saw the people, and then the sons of the Anakims are there, and the fruit, this is the fruit, full stop, that's enough. That's all we told you to find out. You have given us enough information, don't say more. Then he continued, but the giants are there, and we, as big as we are, we were like grasshoppers in their sight. And then they continued, they said, we cannot go in. You don't have to say that. We cannot go in. We were by the Red Sea. Who said we cannot go in? We went through the Red Sea. Don't tell us any conclusion. Just tell us what you have seen. Leave the conclusion to the man of faith and to the Moses that was leading. But they said, we cannot. The whole land, they began to cry. And they said, we are going to choose a captain. And he's going to lead us back to Egypt. And God said, I'm going to make them wander in the wilderness for 40 years. That tragedy of wandering for 40 years was a preventable tragedy. Balaam, he died unnecessarily. How many people die unnecessarily? And these people came from Balak. And they said, Balak, the king of Moab is calling you. He wants you to come and curse the people. So I stay there tonight. I want to go and ask the Lord. While he was asking the Lord, before he even opened his mouth, God said, Who are those people? Oh, they came from Balak. What have they come to do? They want me to come and curse the children of Israel. He said, Don't go. That's all. The tragedy that happened to Balaam later is preventable because the Lord had said, don't go. And he came to the people, the Lord refuses me to go, I cannot go. And then uh, Balak sent back to him again, why won't you come? You're missing something. I'm going to promote you. I'll give you money. Name it. And I'll give you whatever you want. Then he went to God again and he said, I go and he lost. You want to go? Go. And then he went. A while he was going, an angel came with a sword drawn. And they asked, saw the angel. And he asked, turn this way and that way. Eventually his eyes were opened. And he said, I'm sorry, angel. I didn't see you. I would have killed you. Why it not for that ass? Your way is perverse before the Lord. Ah, okay. If you don't want me to go, I will not go. Still sing ye. And the angels, okay, you can go. And eventually he got there, God opened his eyes. He began to prophesy. And Balak said, Go. You don't you don't want the money. And then he went around and said, You know what? How to get the people, make them commit adultery and fornication, immorality with your people. God will forsake them. And eventually a war arose. He died in that battle. A false prophet. The death of Balaam was preventable. He shouldn't have died like that. Think about the man Jonah. 
Jonah, I've appointed you a prophet, arise and go to Nineveh, that big city. And you tell them, my word, that their sins have come, have come unto me. Therefore, they're going to perish because of their sin. And then Jonah, he knew the way to Nineveh. He went the other direction. And then he got into the ship. And then the storm arose. All that storm is a tragedy that they could have avoided. And then all the mariners took all their own property. And they were throwing them into the sea. The loss of their property. It was an avoidable, a preventable tragedy. It shouldn't have happened. And eventually they said, who are you? Where are you coming from? Why is all this befalling us? And he said, I'm a prophet of God. I have anointing, a calling of God upon my life. And I am the cause of all this. They rode, they tried, they did everything. And the storm was increasing. And he said, what are we going to do? Throw me into the sea. They threw him into the sea. And then a whale swallowed him up. They began to cry, began to lament, and began to tell the Lord, Oh Lord, this has come upon me. Jonah, we are saying, this is preventable. All the things that happened to Jonah, why is it that human beings, they will just go on like that, and God is saying, this is the way out. And yet, they have this tragedy. Esau lost his birthright. And again, it's a preventable thing. He came back from the field and he said, I'm hungry. Hey, you are a hunter. You are not a baby. And some of the people that fast for three days, can't you fast for one day? There are even some people that have fasted for seven days, can't you fast for one day? There are people that deal without food and water for even 14 days. Can't you deal without food for just one day? Then, then he saw the pottage that Jacob had prepared. And he said, can you give me the pottage on one condition? You know, the birthright and the privilege of the firstborn that you have got. That is what I want. Save it to me. I'll give you all the pottage you need. And then he sold his birthright. And when it was time to get the blessing, even though he sought it carefully with tears, he couldn't get it. That was a tragedy that happened to Esau. But it was preventable. I'm showing you that all over the Bible, the people that got into all this kind of strategy, and they could have prevented it. Lord's wife, angels came from heaven. And then they held their hands when they were lingering and said, come out of this place because we're going to destroy the place. And then they said, go to the mountain top. Don't stay in the valley and don't look behind you. And while they were going, Lord's wife looked back behind her and became a pillar of salt. It was a preventable tragedy. What I'm telling you is as you look at your life, many things that have happened in your life. This is negative, you fell into a pit here, and that's negative, fell into another valley there. That is negative destruction, devastation happening to you or your family. Things that could have been prevented, preventable tragedy. You remember Gehazi, Naaman had come from Syria, came to the man of God with his leprosy. And the man of God said, go wash in the river Jordan and you're going to be made whole. You know the argument, why should I do it, why should I do it, I'm not a banner and fapa, better rivers. But then eventually he persuaded him, he went in there seven times and he was cleansed. And then he came back and gave the man of God all the money he wanted to give. And the man of God said, no, I don't need your money, freely have you received and freely give. And then he was going and Gaza said, what? My master will allow this man to go like that. And then he ran after him. Now Gehazi should have understood the kind of man and the kind of prophet Elisha was. And that these were the man that will see the secrets, the secrets of the lives of people. And he should have known that Elisha will know. But then he came back and Elisha said, Gehazi, 
Where have you been? Oh, that time you could have just prostrated immediately. I'm sorry. I've gone somewhere. I did something. And he could have repented at that time. But he said, the servant went nowhere. And then Elisha said, didn't my eyes, my mind, my heart go with you? When you went after the man, is this the time to take clothes and riches and money and all that? And the leprosy of Naaman come upon you. Preventable tragedy. Here is Uzziah. He was a king. And the Lord had helped him until he became great. And then all of a sudden one day he just woke up and said, what am I doing here? And then he went to the temple of the Lord. He began to burn incense against the will of the Lord and against everything the Lord has said in his word. And then the priest came unto him and said, Uzziah, you are a king. It appertains not unto you to burn incense before the Lord. Get out because this is not going to be to advantage or profit. And then he got angry. He was wroth. And leprosy came from the altar and came upon him. Uzziah, this is a preventable tragedy. And as I'm telling you today, that many things that happen. And people will say, God wanted it to happen like that. The will of the Lord be done. No, it's not the will of the Lord. It's a preventable tragedy. Miriam. Now Miriam was, you know, was such a wonderful sister of Moses. You remember the story. Even when Moses was born, was she not the was she not the one that made Moses to be taken care of by the mother? And eventually Moses got married. And after Moses got married, God was all right with the marriage. And God was using Moses with the marriage. Everything was all right in the sight of the Lord. And now Miriam and Aaron began to say, uh -huh, What kind of marriage is this? And what kind of woman is this? And leprosy came upon Miriam and was saying, A wonderful woman like Miriam. A protector like Miriam and some of that even led all the women in the singing when it came out of the Red Sea. That's not a woman that should have leprosy. But the tragedy of leprosy came upon her because of her carelessness. Preventable tragedy. But as you look at other people that you know tragedy should have happened, think about for example in a way. Here comes Jonah, and Jonah said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. You know, if the king of Nineveh had been a member of the church that says, Whatever will be, will be, God said, It's all over. God said, We're going to be destroyed. There's nothing. This is tragedy, and it is already confirmed by the prophet. In fact, the prophet passed over the sea and the land to come and tell us, Forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He would have said, that's all right. That's all our hands up. There's nothing we can do. But the king said, we can prevent this. We can avoid this. We can turn this around. Preventable tragedy. Here comes the prophet of God unto Isaiah. And Isaiah said, Ezekiah, set your house in order because you are going to die. You know, if Ezekiah belonged to that other church that says whatever will be, will be, Predestination. He has already ordained, I'm going to die at this time. Ezekiel would have said, That's all right. The prophet is saying it. This is the prophet that prophesied about unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be on his shoulder. This is the prophet that's 